Hey everybody, how's it going? It's the Daily Shooter, and today we're going to be taking a look at a 3MOA red dot that comes in under $200 from Swamp Fox Optics. This is the Liberator. Let's check it out. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and conduct this review just like normal. We're going to start off with the tech specs, details, and features, and then I'll go ahead and give you guys my own personal thoughts and opinions on the optic. Now, starting off with the tech specs, basically what you're looking at here is a little 1X red dot. 1X basically just means that there is no magnification. This does have a 3 MOA red dot in it, and if you're wondering exactly how that's calculated, uh, 1 MOA would cover up 1.047 inches of your target at 100 yards. So if this is a 3 MOA red dot, that means it'll cover up just over 3 inches of your target at 100 yards and that'll increase as you go out so it'll cover six inches at 200 and so forth now this little optic right here does have 10 different brightness levels these brightness levels are adjusted using these side buttons right here which are tactile you can feel the arrows as well as the click each time you push on them but there is no audible feedback so there's no out loud click or anything like that now one thing i found to be nice was that these buttons right here are somewhat firm so you're not going to accidentally adjust the brightness level on your optic if you put it in a case or put it in the back of your truck or something like that over the time that i've been using this optic i've never accidentally adjusted the brightness setting with these buttons on the side now, the Liberator Red Dot does use what's become an industry standard battery, which is the CR2032, which is now very easily accessible and easy to find just about anywhere, where just a few years ago they were kind of hard to find. Nowadays, you can walk into just about any store, including grocery stores, and pick up a CR2032. They're inexpensive, they're easy to find, and they are very, very good batteries. Now, the CR2032 is located in the very side right here. Simply remove this cap put in your battery, put it back on, and you're good for 3,000 hours. So basically 3,000 hours, what I would do and what I do in all my optics, even if they have a 50,000 hour runtime, is every year I just simply go in there and change out the battery. I don't know how long the battery existed before I put it in here. I don't know how much power it had before I put it in here. So I always make sure that I change my batteries out every year at least. Um, sometimes a little bit more depending on how often I use the optic, but still about 3,000 hours of battery life. Now you're looking at a 22 millimeter objective, so it's a fairly small optic, and it doesn't weigh that much either. It weighs under four ounces, and it is not very long. It does not take very much of a footprint on your rifle, so it does give you space if you want to mount it a little bit forward and put some type of magnifier behind it or something like that. It does come with two mounts a one-third lower co-witness mount and a low-rise mount. So you have the one-third lower co-witness, which is a really nice mount. As a matter of fact, it comes pre-installed on the optic and it is almost like a cantilever mount. So it gives it kind of a swept forward position and it's skeletonized. So it's a very lightweight mount. What you would get typically with optics in this price range are just, you know, your standard mounts. So they're kind of thick, you know, aluminum mounts and they do add a little bit of weight. This one being sort of cantilever is nice because it holds a little bit forward if you want to put something behind it. And the fact that it's skeletonized is also nice it also comes with a low rise mount so if you're going to be using it on a shotgun an ak or something that has a comb that's not in line with the bore itself like an ar-15 then uh, this is going to be something where you're going to want to switch over to that low rise mount but if you are using an ar-15 or something similar with a, a stock that's in line with the bore then having that one-third lower co-witness riser definitely does help out quite a bit now this does have uh, adjustment turrets on the top and on the side these turrets are adjustable using either a flathead screwdriver, a bullet casing, or anything that you can fit in there like a coin. However, there is a tool on the top of the turret itself. So as you take the turret cap off, there is almost like a little adjustment piece, like a little flathead screwdriver piece on the very top. And so you can use the cap in order to make your adjustments. Now, these are O-ring sealed, so you will need the cap on there for it to be completely waterproof. So you wanna make sure that when you put your turret caps back on, you put them on nice and tight, because again, that does help with what's, you know, with the waterproofing of the optic itself. Now, since I mentioned that the turrets have O-rings on them to help with the waterproofing, I should also mention that the entire optic is IPX7 waterproof rated. 
and the glass has a nice ruby red coating on it so it has a nice anti-reflective coating okay now let me give you guys my own personal thoughts and opinions on this optic and we'll talk about my experience with it now to be honest with you, when it comes to optics that cost around $200 or less, I typically add an extra layer of scrutiny. So the review will take me longer. I'll make sure that I go through, you know, maybe a thousand or 2000 more rounds with the optic before I actually bring it in front of the camera. I'll try it on several different firearms. This thing's been on my 12 gauge shotgun. Uh, it's been on my AR 10, just testing the recoil sensitivity to it. Uh, they say that this has been tested up to 800 G's. As a matter of fact, I actually have a little video that I can show you guys uh, that they posted to Instagram. Uh, that shows exactly how they kind of test it for zero and kind of test its recoil sensitivity so forth But I've had this thing mounted to several different firearms and I've never had a single issue with it I've never had a problem with it flickering. I've never had a problem with it going out. I've never had a problem with its durability I don't own any safe Queens. Well, okay one I have a Henry golden boy that I like to keep really nice But other than that, I don't have any safe Queens all my guns get used all my guns get tossed around It's not really that big of a deal for me now. It ended up on my 22 because to be honest with you, a red dot to me is like perfect for a 22 because there's no magnification. I don't have to worry about magnification because with a 22, I'm usually shooting within like 100 yards and closer. So it works perfect for a rifle like this. But again, you can add it to whatever you want. I didn't have a single issue with it. So one of the things that I always look for in an optic like this too is how bright does a red dot get? Because I shoot out in the desert and in the Mojave Desert, there's a lot of red sand. The sun gets very bright. There's no shade. There's no trees out there. There's maybe some bushes, a couple yuccas, stuff like that. And I got to tell you that it gets really, really bright. Uh, I was very, very happy with the brightness uh, levels on this optic. One thing that I look for on top of the fact that it needs to be bright enough for me to see it in the desert is how dim can it get for, let's say, like a home defense scenario. Because I also had this set up on my AR-9. And uh, my AR-9 is kind of like a backup home defense firearm. So I always like to keep an optic ready. I like to keep an optic always on. And so this was on there. And I got to tell you that the brightness uh, levels get low enough where you can see it perfect at night and bright enough where you can see it perfectly during the day. So my experience with the, the dot was fine. Now, when it comes to astigmatism, obviously I get a lot of people that ask me this question. When it comes to astigmatism and a red dot like this, you're gonna see a little bit of that flare. You're gonna see a little bit of that burning man or that kind of blooming that comes off the red dot. That's just simply because of the astigmatism. If you were to look through this through a camera, you can always test it by taking your cell phone and looking through the optic, you'll see a perfectly round dot. So for me, the round dot right here was really nice. It's a perfect size in my own opinion because I think 3 MOA really does kind of lend itself to being easy to pick up, easy to find, and instead of like a 1 or 2 MOA dot which can be really fine and precise, a 3 MOA dot is fine, it's easy to pick up, but it's big enough where you know you're just putting it on your target, you're pulling the trigger and you're going to hit it because you don't have to worry about parallax and sight radius, stuff like that. It's all there, that's all there is to it. As long as you can see your target and you can put the red dot on it, you're going to hit your target. So red dots like this are really, really useful. Now, one of my favorite features of the Liberator is actually the glass. The glass on this thing is extremely clear. When you're talking about other optics in this category, I mean, it doesn't matter if they're the same price or something that's even two or three times more expensive. Typically, when you look through, you see some type of blue-green hue. So it's something that actually changes the color of your target. And as the sun goes down, depending on how dark that, that tint is, it can actually change the amount of light transparency or transmission that you get through the optic to the eye. So it can look a little bit darker through your optic. This one right here is so clear that if you're shooting with both eyes open, it is hard to tell the difference between the, the non-optic eye and the, the eye that's looking through the optic at the change of color. And there's a very, very slight hue, but not much at all. It is just extremely clear glass. So the fact that they have the ability to make a red dot that's that bright without having that type of uh, green reflection on the glass is extremely nice. So that's one of my favorite features of this optic right here. It's just really, really clear. Now, one thing I would like to see changed, and maybe this is nothing that they can do on this optic. And to be honest with you, it's not that big of a deal because I have a dozen optics that are just like this and I've never had a problem. But uh, one thing I would like to see maybe in a second version of this optic right here is a little bit of material buildup as protection for this top turret. Because the side turret is sort of protected by the battery compartment, but this top turret is exposed. So there is the potentiality that as you're swinging the rifle around or you're walking around or you just you know throw it in the back of your car, truck, whatever, that you could hit this top turret and either A, damage the optic or change your 
uh, the adjustment of the reticle itself on the inside. So even though it's I've never had an issue with it, I still would like to see a little bit of protection in front of that top turret right here. But uh, again, I guess that's me just being a little bit extra picky on this. So anyway, this is definitely something worth checking out. Like I said before, I do have a discount code that I can share with you guys down below, and I will put a link in the description box so you guys can check this out. The Liberator 3 MOA Red Dot. This thing is just an absolute incredible value and definitely something worth checking out. Thank you all very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe. Have a great day.